So this video is going to be about building uh, bat houses and bird houses and stuff. Um, what that's really about though is pest control. And so what's going on is right here. I don't have to tell dog or teach her to go hunt down all the mice and rabbits and critters that are running around on my farm. She just does it. It's instinctive. You don't have to teach her. You don't have to train her. She's just there. <laughs> she does a really good job of it. Significant reduction in uh, mouse population on not only my place, but my neighbors as well, since I got dog. And it's because she's just a voracious predator. So already starting to get a lot of flies on the cows. See all those swarming around on them. So that's a problem that causes a few things. Uh, one causes something called fly worry, or it can if they're really bad. Basically, the cows just get stressed out because they're bothered by flies. They won't eat efficiently. It can cause them to not breed back. Um, if they're already pregnant, it can actually cause them to abort the the calf, abort the pregnancy. So we don't want that. Hang on, got ahead of myself there. Uh, so fly worry, that's one problem that flies cause, okay? That's caused by those smaller ones that we were just looking at on number 34 over there. Um, or actually, you haven't seen that yet. You're about to look at on number 34. Um, those ones, they're, they're annoying, but it takes a lot of them to cause uh, fly worry. There's two other kinds that we're worried about though. One's called face flies, aptly named. They mostly hang out on the animal's faces and uh, they will get in their eyes and they bite at their eyes and that can lead to pink eye which I've had a ton of problems with out here and now they're it's a bacterial infection pink eye so the fly is actually biting them it's not necessarily the cause of the infection but they open them up they tear that tissue up right around their eyes and that causes them opens them up to the infection and then the other thing with the face flies is that they'll fly around and get on you know, one cow's face and fly over to another cow's face, and so they are a direct vector for spreading pink eye. Once one animal has it, they can cause it to be spread to the other ones, all right? Now that's annoying, but it's just pink eye. It's easy to treat. If I can reduce it, then I can reduce the amount of uh, antibiotics I have to use, which would be great. But it's not that big a deal at the end of the day, because I can fix it. Um, another type of fly that you guys will be more familiar with is the horse fly. Horse flies are the primary vector for a disease called anaplas, which is almost 100% fatal in cows. Uh, particularly uh, bulls tend to fare particularly poorly to it, but uh, cows as well. And the trouble is a lot of times you can't really uh, catch the symptoms until it's kind of too late. So it, it can be treated, but um, a lot of times it's fatal though. <laughs> and I, I think I lost a cow to anaplas last year and I didn't really know to be watching for it because I'm new and I suck but uh, yeah so that happens so that's why we're trying to get rid of the flies <laughs> uh, they cause a lot of problems with the cattle now as far as um, pest control for the flies kind of the obvious answer is poison right so there's spray that I can spray on them but they don't like it they don't like getting sprayed so you know, they won't just stand there and let me do it um, you can also do back rubbers and that kind of works but if you see, if you look at this one, I don't know if you can tell, they get flies all over their belly as well. That back rubber, that helps, but it's just, it's not, it's not perfect. You know, it's not the best solution. The other thing you can do is there's mineral that will make their manure toxic to cows, or to, uh, not to cows, to flies. So these type of flies, they'll lay their, their eggs in the manure, and then that's where the larva grows, and, and then uh, turns back into more flies, right? So having the cows out here, it's just kind of a breeding ground for flies. It's always a problem that you're going to have to fight. Problem with that, um, with that method using the mineral is that it makes their, their manure toxic to all bugs, right? Anything. And to get that, that manure back into the ground where it's beneficial to me and helps, helps the grass and actually works as fertilizer, I need it to get down into the soil. The best way to do that is with bugs, um, dung beetles to be specific. So if I use that type of mineral to try and break the life cycle on the flies, I'm also uh, killing off all the dung, dung beetles and beneficial bugs, right? So I don't want that either. So all of those are kind of, you might call them like a passive control. Something I put out there and then just let it work, right? Um, so the, the um, chemical in the, in the manure or the chemical on them, I'm just kind of treating the, uh, the symptom 
but I'm not actually getting rid of the flies in the end of the day. The other problem with that is that you go through all of that and uh, you end up, you know, damaging the other bugs in the ground. And then if my neighbor has flies, because they have cows, right? And then my other neighbors have cows, so there's flies there. My neighbors to the other side, they have cows, so there's flies over there. If we're not all on the exact same program for trying to control them, then none of that actually works anyway. The flies will just come from the neighbor's place and get on my cows. So what I need is an active control, right? Something that's just out here all the time working that I don't have to worry about anymore, but that's actively hunting and predating those flies. And that's the idea behind birdhouses and um, the bat houses as well. Um, now the, the bats, they'll eat mosquitoes, which is beneficial for me, um, and they'll eat flies as well. And then those uh, swallows that I'm trying to get out here. Um, right now I've got an eastern bluebird in one of the houses and one of the other bird houses has some bird that I, I don't recognize. I haven't identified it yet. I've only seen it once and it was when I opened the box to see what was in there and it flew out right in my face. I didn't get a very good look at it. So um, anyway, if I can get, you know, more predatory birds, predatory towards flies that is, then they'll help me and they'll just constantly sit here and eat these flies, just like dogs, always constantly running around looking for mice and stuff. She's out here with me, but she's not with me because she's off over there hunting. And that's the whole idea. So that's, I'm not, not a birder. I like birds. They're cool. I like looking at them and watching them and stuff. But the birds I'm getting out here, I'm trying to use as, as tools to help me with cattle management. So it's all, all tied back together at the end of the day. And the same thing with the bats. So they're just beneficial animals. So if I provide a habitat for them, the hope is they'll show up and they'll help keep the flies off. Like this girl here, number 34. I don't know if well you guys can tell. See that though? And it's early spring. Um, so the flies are just now starting to come back, come back, right? And they're already all over them. Now I've sprayed them all twice already this year. And uh, yeah, you can see how well that works. It just doesn't. So, and the, the chemical I'm, I'm using, it, it's good and all, but you know, they get rained on and washes it all off. And that's the other problem washes it off into the ground and then it damages those beetles again. So anyway, um, I think the uh, video on the birdhouses that's next, it's right now, I think uh, that has already been shown previously, but I threw it back in here because it's kind of on topic. And then in the end of that clip, I only had six birdhouses built. I now have 10 of them hung up. So just constantly find more wood to, to build them and, and go from there. So anyway, uh, here's a, my quick video on building uh, bird houses and bat houses and hanging them up. All right, so a while back I brought home all this uh, reclaimed uh, wood. It's uh, just pallet wood is all it is, and I'm going to make bird houses out of it. So today I wanted to go ahead and get started on that. You can see this one that I picked. It's got a lot of, uh, I'll put it like that, it's got a lot of crown to it. So I picked it to cut up first as I don't quite have the right um, material. The sides of this should actually be 2 by 8s All I have is this 2 by 6 material. Um, so I'm kind of adjusting this as I go. So I picked the, the worst one as my first one in case I make some mistakes and it doesn't work. Um, pretty simple though, so far. Um, you know, I've got the top, the bottom, the front. That'll get a hole drilled in it. That thing. Um, the two sides are the angle on them. The back, some screws. Pretty simple. Um, I went ahead and whipped together these little saw horses just to work on. Um, out of the two buys that I brought home out of this same uh, pallet, just reclaimed lumber. So all this is free lumber, didn't cost me anything. So, um, all right, this is pretty straightforward from here. I just need to put the sides on, put the bottom on, and then the, the top, the way the, or the front rather, I'll screw it on at the top right here and from this side, but not at the bottom. And then what I'll do is I'll drill an angled hole through here like this that I can drop just a nail in and that'll keep the bottom in place but then I can pull that nail out and hinge the front of it up and then I can clean the birdhouse out every year and if you don't do that the birds that this is targeting um, they're uh, tree swallows is that right yeah tree swallows um, their nest will get mites in them and it's bad for the birds if you don't clean them out every spring so uh, from what I've read most people they'll clean the old nest out and then they just spray some bleach water in there to kill all the parasites or microbes or whatever's in there and then they'll they'll move back in um, later on so anyway um, the tree swallows are specifically a bird that is it's a predatory bird that eats bugs they predate bugs particularly flies so that's why we're trying to get them out here 
So it looks like I'll be able to make one birdhouse out of each one of these pieces, um, which so that'll give me four plus this one if, if it works out. So and then this one's got a big crack through it. So I don't know if that'll be usable or not. So I may only end up with three good birdhouses, but that's all right. I started with none. So um, let me just get this screwed together real quick and and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, it took me a uh, three tries to get to one that I'm happy with. So that's the design I'm going to keep. I'll write down all those measurements and stuff. This is the first one, second one, a little bit taller, a little bit skinnier. Third one, shortened it up just a little bit. And uh, I like it, that one looks pretty good, I think. So, uh, I got two boards left. We'll go ahead and turn those into one of these. I've already kind of just jotted down my measurements here so I don't lose them. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. I think all three of them will work. I'm gonna hang them all up um, at some point and uh, we'll try them all out. We'll see if one gets more birds than the other. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that this is, it's pretty narrow, it's an uh, inch and a half narrower than uh, what it was supposed to be, or two inches, two inches narrower, is that right? Yeah, two inches. Narrower than what the print's called out for. That one is the correct width, it's just shorter in the other direction, but uh, I don't think that'll be a problem though. They're not very big birds that we're trying to get in there, so. Anyway, uh, I think that looks pretty good, final iteration there that is. That one's particularly ugly. I'm gonna hang it somewhere where I don't have to look at it very often. And that one's not too bad. Craftsmanship is pretty much terrible, but uh, you know, it's just birdhouses made out of scrap wood. So this nail, like I said, in here at an angle. And then that will allow me to, oh, this one's tight. All right, so final <laughs> design change. Add a screw here as a knob. There's pretty tight, which is okay. Just like that so I can hinge this up It'll be easier once it's mounted on a pole get in there clean the nest out whatever's in there uh, see how crooked that is so I was talking about the craftsmanship's not not great on these they're pretty rough uh, this one's the best one yet and lid's still a little bit crooked that's all right though it only gets opened once a year so no big deal. And it's all assembled, it's relatively straight and square. So, anyway, birdhouses. Alright, see if I can knock these last two out real quick. Alright, check it out. Got uh, six of them out of the material that I had. Still don't like that one, it's pretty ugly. So, what I'll do is I'll just screw these to, you know, power pole or something straight through the inside. I'll just get a long drill bit and screw them straight in there. So I've got this one here, and out here I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five telephone poles out there, so I'll put them out there. I'll have one left over, that ugly one. Uh, maybe I'll go, I don't know where I'll put that one. Like I said, somewhere, somewhere where I don't have to look at it very often. So maybe that one probably go way out there. But, uh, Anyway, pretty cool, pretty happy about that. So, um, I was hoping to get a few more out of it, but uh, that's just the material that I had. So, I'll keep scrounging material, and anytime I can get free lumber, I get it. So, alrighty. Fun fact um, an adult nesting pair of tree swallows can eat up to 8,000 flies a day. So, I've got at the end of this, I actually ended up with 10 total birdhouses that are hung up. So, if I can get 10 nesting pairs of tree swallows, that's potentially. 80,000 flies that are going to get taken off the map every single day. Alright, so working on uh, bat boxes here, bat houses. So I've got the uh, layout done for my first sheet of plywood here. This is all my lines to cut. Now, see how all these little lines? It's took kind of a long time. What this is, is these are going to be 16 inch grooves that I'm going to cut in these uh, like uh, baffles. And so the way this is going to work is it is a um, four compartment. Uh, bat house and so these will go in the middle and there'll be the separators in between each compartment um, I got these plans off of uh, Bat conservation international.com and they have plans to build um, this house and this is their four chamber breeding box They also have another one called a uh, rocket box and it's one that would mount on top of a piece of pipe or something So this is enough to make two of them. Uh, it's actually enough to make four of them 
So, um, but what I've got laid out here, this will be two of them. And so we'll rip this in half and we'll cut all these grooves all at once. I'll probably, I'll go ahead and cut these out of here just to get that out of my way. And then we'll, we'll cut all my grooves all at once. And then, um, we'll cut these lines and actually split them into their baffles. Now the original plan calls for some holes, uh, one and a half inch holes so that they can crawl through. Um, I don't have a hole saw of that size, so I think what I'm going to do is just cut the uh, corners off of the baffles. Um, or maybe just cut like a notch out of the top here. I don't know. And then the, the grooves are for them to climb on, gives them something to grip so they can climb up in there. Like I said that. So we'll get this one done, and then we've got a sheet of half inch plywood. This is 3 8 plywood. And then got a sheet of half inch plywood as well. We'll get that laid out and get all that cut, cut work done. And again, um, I'm going to make two for now, but these two sheets of plywood and uh, got some cedar boards over here as well. Um, but that's this is all enough to make four total uh, bat houses. So um, on this other side, I might try to make one of those rocket boxes. Um, we'll see just with the, the leftover material. And I might just go ahead and make up four of these. I don't know. So anyway, I'm going to get some cutting done and uh, uh, bring you guys back. So starting to lose sunlight i may not finish these tonight um but we'll at least get one coat of stain on everything and and try to get them at least assembled so then we'll finish staining them tomorrow so all right back in a minute well don't too close <laughs> they're not very straight it's actually kind of hard to do um cut just a little bit of shallow grooves like that so you can see yeah they're all wobbly but should be fine these are just it's just so that they can grab a hold of it and you know climb so Hopefully that'll work. Oh, hands are shaky. That saw is super uncomfortable for doing that many cuts that fast like that. My hands are kind of hurting. <laughs> anyway, um, all right, we'll go ahead and get these cut out into the six panels and then we'll start on the half inch. All right, so I've got all my layout done here um, on the half inch sheet. And so what we got going on here is this is one back, this is the other back, and these are gonna be 31 by 17 and a half. And then the remainder of the sheet is the front top. Right there is the front bottom. So the way this works, the front has a, uh, a little uh, slit in it for ventilation. And then these are my pieces for the roof. And so you now these I'll have to cut with, uh, it calls it a 25 degree bevel according to the drawings that I have. I may rework that and figure that out to be something like a 412 pitch, just because that is easier to draw with a, uh, a square, right? So if I wanted a 412 pitch, you just simply draw it like that, and that would be a 4 412 pitch. Um, I can do, well, I guess I can do degrees on there as well, like that. So I don't know, that may be easier. We'll see. That'll be kind of just a, we'll design that as we go. But uh, anyway, so that's all that layout done. Um, let's start cutting it out. All right, so it's got everything cut up. Um, all my cedars cut up. Now I'm looking at this, I would actually need two more of these one by sixes um, to make all the spacers and the extra, the sides and stuff like that, um, if I was gonna make four of these total. So if I, if I wanna go ahead and make four of them, I'll need two more two by sixes. Um, out of all of that though, this is all the scrap material that was left over. And this piece of one by six, they actually, they only had two um, two by six by eight foot um, cedar boards and so the other one was real jacked up and so he just gave me a 10 footer so that's actually two foot more than there would have actually been if I'd bought the the you know the correct lumber so um, and then of course I've got half sheet of three eighths and a half sheet of half inch a bunch of sawdust on the ground so all right let me get this set up here on my little uh, freezer workbench here and um, we could start uh, getting stain on stuff and I'll kind of show you how these go together. All right, so here it is just mocked up. Now everything's gonna get stained black inside and out. So you can see the front here, it's got this little slit and that's just a vent. I still need to cut in here somewhere. I need to cut a half inch slit in here. That's also a vent um, so they don't get too hot in there. And the, the, now the reason we paint it black um, and I'm actually, I'm gonna use a black stain but the reason for that is so that it does get hot. It needs to be nice and warm for them. So you can see the roof beveled right there. I've got to clean up my uh, cut right here, but it's got a bevel on the back side of it there that will correspond with 
the building that I'm hanging it on. So that's cool. And then peel the front off. So as we open it up, you can kind of see what's going on there. And so that's where that, that vent will be that I'll need to cut into here. And then you can see you got those different compartments. Now, these roof supports here are supposed to be that one and this one were supposed to be beveled, but I had already cut them out of the uh, the the two by six, and uh, I don't think I can cut a bevel on those now just with a skill saw. So um, those just aren't going to get beveled. Shouldn't be a big deal. And then this all just gets screwed together. So as you stack this up, you just keep screwing these all the way through. And, and actually what I could probably do is just run big long screws straight through the whole thing from both sides, you know, maybe like two over here and one over there, and then run them back through from the back side as well. Um, I think I've got some that are long enough. Might be an even easier way to do that. And then they've just got a little bit of space in here. So bats, I guess they like really tight, you know, tight spaces. Um, yeah, so... Now, as far as mounting this goes, I may change this design just a little bit again, and I may make this so that it all kind of does something like this, you know, with my roof. That way I've got some room up here to screw through, and because what I'm going to do is on my hay barn over there, I'm just going to screw straight through that into the uh, side of my barn <laughs> up there tall by the, the eaves or whatever. So I may bump this down put the roof on like that and then I can seal this off with some silicone so that it doesn't get water in there and then I'll be able to screw through there and at the bottom so um, the next step is going to be getting everything stained um, like I said it does all get stained inside and out so I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, first coat on on everything and then um, come back tomorrow and we'll we'll stain everything again and then I can assemble it and then I'll stain the outside again probably maybe a two or three coats make sure it's nice and dark and uh, yeah, we'll have some bat houses. So, like I said, I've got two of them to do, and so um, it'll be good, pretty easy. So, it all went together pretty simple, and and I like this design having just I mean barely any waste material left over. So, that's not waste. That's actually my other sides. <laughs> just set them down out of the way. So, alrighty. Um, now it said to use a water-based stain. I couldn't find any water-based stain that was as dark as I wanted and so what I ended up with is just black but uh, it's uh, oil based so I'm wondering if that might be not as good for them for the bats so I think what I'll do is I'll stain it and I'll probably give it about a week or so I'll assemble it all but I'll, I'll give it about a week or two before I actually um, hang it up that way it's got plenty of time to off gas anything from the uh, from the oil based stain just to make sure we don't actually hurt the bats so because I want her to be happy and healthy. So, otherwise this is all futile. So, um, all right, with that said, I'll see you guys in like two weeks. So, don't forget to uh, drill these holes that the bats can crawl between each of the baffles in there. It'd be better to have done this before you assemble it. I forgot, so I already had it assembled. Um, what I have is this big paddle bit, and I just went straight through all of them. Some of the holes on the inside are a little bit rough, which, I don't love that one's actually a little bit worse but it should be okay uh, imagine though I don't know it should be fine <laughs> so anyway um, we'll do our kind of final assembly and then I'll restain the outsides to make sure it's nice and dark and even we'll fix some of the areas like this and uh, get like my edges and stuff and these bat boxes will be ready and then I'm gonna wait till uh, next weekend before I actually hang them up that way uh, I know that uh, this oil-based stain has had plenty of time to uh, off-gas and everything. So, all right, let's finish putting them together, and we'll see you guys next weekend. All right, check it out. Bat boxes are almost done. Now, uh, kind of see I had some, you can see that this warped a little bit. Uh, I had some bad carpentry right there. It's all right, though. So the last thing we need to do on this before it's ready to actually install is uh, silicone up all of these uh, cracks and stuff like that and we'll do all these edges as well and of course the top here and some extra holes that I accidentally put in there 
Um, I did my best to kind of pull the roof back straight, but uh, it should be okay. So like I said, we'll silicone all that up. And then the same on this one. Let's see, I've got kind of a gap right there. Silicone that up. And these will be pretty much done. So we'll do that. And I think I'll let that silicone dry till tomorrow. And then we'll go figure out how we're going to hang them on the on the hay barn out there. So I'll get this knocked out. And then I'll show you what my current plan is on how I'm going to hang these. All right. So that's the caulking done. Get all the seams. Both of them. This is a standable caulk, so once this is dried, um, I'll, I'll take my stand and just go back over it real quick and uh, make it all black again. And then, like I said, tomorrow it should be ready to actually go hang them up. So, all right, let's go check out the spot I'm going to hang them. All right, so right up here, and another one over on the other side. And and actually, I've been debating that because I was reading that uh, they tend to. Uh, be more attracted to like a cluster of boxes the bats it is um, so maybe I'll do it like on this one and this one or something like that but uh, hang them way up here so now the question is how am I gonna mount them up there so I can screw straight into this purling on the top here but then there's nothing down underneath that to attach to so ideally it'd be nice if I could get some more little pieces of, of purling which is like this type of stuff and make like a little thing that sticks out here to support the bottom of it. So I might look around and see if I can find something like that. And I might be able to use some of my pipe that I have, my oil filled pipe. Maybe I can just weld that on there. It should give me something to screw to. So anyway, that's the plan. Um, I've got that big ladder over there. Um, hopefully it's tall enough that I can get up there. Might be a little bit sketchy, but ought to be all right. So. Actually, I'm looking at that. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's those purlings. It's uh, it's just pretty thin metal, easy to just run self tapper straight through there. So uh, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that. There's a wasp nest up there. It's got a wasp on it. Great. So yeah, they're kind of everywhere. Hopefully, I don't get stung too many times, especially up there on a the tall ladder. So uh, while I'm out here, I'm gonna go feed them calves so anyway that's the plan um like i said hopefully i can find some some purling just some thin metal that i can weld in up here at the top of a couple of these i beams i have bat boxes up there that's the plan anyway where'd dog go there she is what do you think of that dog i have some bats around here no comment all right, let's go feed some calves and then I'm gonna go do some backup work. So a while back, I built some uh, bat houses. So I got three chambers in there. I've got some video on it. I'll show you guys on building those. And so I've got these brackets made up. They'll go on like that. I've got these ones clamped up there already. I'm just gonna weld them on up there. Uh, wherever they are, up there. I got my big ladder. So I'm gonna go and get those hung up and uh, the idea is that bats eat bugs so uh, if we can get a bunch of bats out here they'll help control uh, flies and mosquitoes and stuff like that so they say a single bat can eat a thousand mosquitoes a night so these bat houses should be able to house about 100 bats each um, they call them nursery boxes so alrighty so those are welded up one over there too so pretty cool now I'll just drill some holes, um, probably two on each side, top and bottom, and then and I think I'll just run some self-tappers through there. They may be too long and stick through, and then I'll have to, have to cut them off so bats don't get hurt. Uh, the ones on top won't matter because they won't be up there anyway, but yeah, all right, we uh, go find a drill and a drill bit. So my welding trailer has a two-inch hitch on it. That four-wheeler's got a uh, one and seven-eighths ball on it. Never had any problems with it. It's not like I have to go very far, but uh, I went up to get that uh, screw gun and everything, and uh, trailer bounced off on the way back. So it's so dang heavy up on the front. It's got a lot of tongue weight. I couldn't pick it up by hand, so I had to uh, run around the tractor here. Uh, come back and see if I can get back up to it. Maybe not lose it this time. 
Alrighty, that house is pretty cool. The uh, safety office at my day job could have seen that. I'd have got fired on the spot for sure. <laughs> that was a little bit sketchy, hanging around the back side of that ladder to put the screws in. It's done though, so now we just wait. Um, we'll know if, if I got bats in there, because uh, their guano will pile up down here at the base of my uh, eye beams, so pretty cool. See up in there, it's got uh, four compartments. So, awesome. Hopefully, some bats move in. Uh, let everybody know that bats are invited. So, they got a nice place to live. And uh, as long as they don't get on the ground, the dog won't eat them. There's, there's no cats out here, except for the wild ones. And they got to deal with those anywhere. So, all right. Time to go do some chores. Go check on these guys. Got uh, some pink eye out here again. Still fighting that. So uh, probably gonna have to work them all through the shoot tomorrow, I think. Well, I'll feed them and right now and check on them and see, but probably gonna have to work them. Anyway. Alrighty. Well, that's the Bat House video, so thanks for watching, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time.